Good morning, Warriors! Back with another episode of Vigor Warriors 2 and the 1% Club. This weather is getting tremendous in the Midwest here. <laughs> I'm looking at this. We're dropping at 20, 20 degrees and we're going to get colder and colder. This is like Viking weather and warrior weather. So enjoy the morning, my friends. Enjoy, Warriors. Continue to conquest. Continue to go out and fight the battle. Battle on every day and make it a worthwhile day. Remember, every day is a new and great day for a great warrior. All right. Now, I was going to talk about diet today, and I was going to talk about senior retention, but I'm going to hold off until tomorrow on that one, only because I had a great comment from James, uh, Arizona. Arizona James, I think is also basketball James. I'm not sure. I think it's a, one of the same. But a great comment. Talking about that body wants the pleasure, and the soul is strong internally. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about this one a little bit. Okay, so what he's talking about here, and once again, please subscribe, comment, like. Uh, you know, I get all ideas for these topics, and I got about 30 of them in my in the uh, the cropper here, waiting to kind of come out. I think it's uh, a lot of them, all of them coming from you guys, and so I appreciate that. Oh, shout outs, by the way. A couple ideas I want to kind of talk about before I start. Open source, great workout schedule, my friend, and your message. Keep it up. I love it. Um, Don Van, Don Van on life success thing. You guys got you got a buck. Congratulations, my friend. Keep it up. Great to hear. Uh, fake stock guru relapsing. That's okay, my friend. Keep going. Don't give up. And uh, tone reason. Um, does it affect shooting a basketball? We'll talk about exercise more and doing that probably a little bit in the next couple days. So it's a good question. We'll hold on to a curvy shine. Thank you, my friend, for your comment. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Leo, great, great observation. We're going to talk about that a little bit, that women get excited when they see you. Of course they do. This is why they, they giggle, laugh, because they sense a man of power. They sense a man, a warrior, who has that discipline, that self-control. And they actually get actually even more reinforcement when they come and try to talk with you, perhaps even flirt with you, and you resist. You're not sucked in. And the temptation sucked in. And there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that for a second because we'll go back to James Arizona's comment on this. But it's a great comment. And Leo, we'll talk about that one separately, but I love that comment. So, okay. And uh, TY, thank you for your comment. And we'll put a bunch of these down uh, and looking at this as we go through. So, all right, great job, guys. Okay, let's talk about what James is talking about. Okay, so the reason why... And I, it been work, I've been going through this for you know many, many years. My observation, at least, this is just my observation, is the fact that I believe James is right. He talks about the fact that the body is looking for pleasure. Now, why is the body looking for pleasure? Well, let's examine this. The body basically is a machine. God gives us these tools to work with, to gather strong enough to protect, to get things done, to grow crops, to work on a daily business, all these type of things day after day. He gives you arms and legs and all these type of things. But what happens is that the body works so much that the body's response is only a machine response. You are directing that through all the impulses in your mind. And so, when we talk about the flesh being weak, and the Bible talks about the flesh being weak, as James is doing here, the idea is, is that that body has no stoppage. This body cannot stop anything you tell it to do. If you want to tell that body to get excited about something, that body's going to get excited. This is why the reaction from women, like Leo was saying, is prevalent. Right? As soon as they see you, they're ready to go. They're excited. Because it's a body reaction, a subconscious reaction. Now, the more you're aware of it from a male standpoint, the more you can kind of control your thoughts and try to block it or stop it and use some self-restraint. You're not going to kind of hit on every woman that comes up to you and flirts with you or who's excited and ready to go to, uh, to having intercourse, right? You're not going to do that because you have goals and purposes. You're moving ahead. But this is why James is talking about the fact that the body is weak. The flesh is weak. And of course, it is weak. 
It wants food. It wants pleasure. If you didn't, it, it, people who don't use their minds all or their spirits and soul, they will go ahead and just be the most pleasure-seeking people in the world. And you see this a lot with animals and other things because the body is controlling that entity. The chakras, all that stuff, it doesn't matter to the person. The person is being more controlled by the body and the flesh. And the flesh, I don't care who it is, that flesh gets attracted by people. And if you touch, the person touches you, you'll react because your flesh does. Now, on the other hand, that mind of yours is also going in full blast saying, okay, this person touched me, how should I react? I got excited, but I'm not taking the next step. You know, I don't want this situation. The consequences of this are worse than the benefits. And so I'm not going to go ahead and go forward doing it. So the thought pattern, again, is that the flesh is weak, but the spirit and soul is strong. And that's where you've got to build your strength warrior internally. You build it internally first, and then it will come out and protect you like an armor, and, a, and an armor of invincibility when it comes to your conquest. It's only because your mind now is controlling your body. Now, it sounds like a joke, but think about it. When you really think about it, there's a lot of people out there who are controlled more by their body than they are by their mind. A lot of people don't think the mind does anything. And that's why we only use 10% of our brain. I think Edison said that. A lot of people have said that over the years. And a lot of that's because we don't attempt to use our brain. We don't think it's a big factor because we can't see it. All we see is the flesh in front of us and we go after it. This is why men, because they're visually oriented, will chase a woman even though that woman may not be good for them in the long run. And this is why you have to be careful about that flesh. You as a warrior gotta take charge of your flesh. You can't allow your flesh to take charge of you. And this is why what you do is you build that soul. You meditate, you pray, you give yourself over to your God and you basically say, God, lead me, direct me, give me the power. I can't tell you the amount of times, more and more as the street goes on, women coming and flirting, all kinds of stuff. I got women all over just saying things, right, that are so untypical that I used to get for years. But the difference is I'm different. I'm reacting differently. I take it as a nice compliment, and that's it. Time to move on because I have other things I'm doing. Now part of it, and we'll talk about this in another video, is the reason why you may not be getting that attraction you're seeing is because you're focusing too much on it. <laughs> it's almost the psychology of, of interactions. When you don't care about something, it shows its face to you. Once you don't pay attention to women, women will come pay attention to you. Because everything is a mutual thing. We don't always see it that way because you're chasing the women around. They're actually chasing you. You don't see that. But they're attracting you or else they wouldn't have attracted you in the first place. So the thing is, guys and gals, you have to kind of look to see, warriors, what's really happening in the situation you're dealing with. But what's really happening is the fact that you have to sit back and control your nature. And again, as people flirt with you as they give you temptation I don't care if it's women I don't care if it's drugs I don't care if it's alcohol gambling all these things these are all matters of controlling the body food I'm still working on that one myself food is very you, know, you have to eat the right diet continue being consistent and disciplined and even at 61 years old I have to continue maintaining even more so now discipline to try to get to that six pack of abs that I've been always wanting to get. And I didn't think I could get that, but so you guys are saying in the messages, you're seeing a possibility now because of retention. It just keeps the, the nutrients in yourself, and now all of a sudden your body is more sculptured and it looks closer. And even at 61, I got a two pack. I don't have the six yet, I'm getting closer. I have to keep adjusting things to make sure that I stay on task. 
That's my challenge. The other stuff, it's gotten better. All right? And I think the thing is, you have to take control of that. But the more practice you're getting, the more habit-forming things you're doing with retention, the better you're going to be at self-control. And once again, always focus on God first. If you focus on God first, then all of a sudden the soul becomes stronger, the spirit becomes your high priority, and now all these other things that are in your life, women, money, all these things become secondary. And it's funny, as time goes on, I'll give you this from a, a, an old perspective here. As time goes on, people either focus on wanting to accumulate more or less. And in my opinion, a lot of that deals with your faith. In my case, as time has gone on, even though I have you know nice collections of things, I don't really care if they're here or not. I could get rid of them tomorrow. And that's what Jesus said, give up everything and follow me. As time goes on, as old you get, the less you need if you have a strong faith. Now, lots of other people, and I give a gold example back in the old days, a great movie called Citizen Kane. If you get a chance back in the 1940s, go back and watch that. It's about Randolph, uh, William Randolph Hearst, who accumulated millions and everything. But he died, and, and almost like Howard Hughes, these people, they live such a bad life, even though they have millions of dollars. Because they don't have that inner spirit. They lost it. They sold themselves out. And Jesus and God said, what price is all the gold in the world if you sell your soul out? And that's why we talk about the fact that you have to build the soul. The flesh means nothing. But the more you build the soul, the less you need the flesh. And therefore, you become that chakra entity of energy that you don't need all these things around you. And you become internal in your focus. Instead of external, you're becoming internal. And that's when you get the power. The power is from within you, not outside of you. And a lot of people make that mistake. I see athletes, celebrities, all this happens all the time with them. They live a great life. They make lots of money. They're successful. They're in a public eye until one minute they're not. And they can't deal with it because their whole life was based on that public image. Not internally, but externally. And because of that, they fall apart. And a lot of times you don't see them. They go recluse, they hide, they won't make public appearances because everything is based on what people looked at it in the old days. They look at them now, it's terrible. You see wrestlers, professional wrestlers like this recently. You see athletes like this all the time. Uh, movie stars, celebrities. You don't see them when they're 60, 70 years old anymore because they don't want to appear. Not that there's anything wrong with aging. But the bottom line is they don't want to have people see them now like they used to see them before. And that's where you get into imaging. Your God becomes the idol. Your idol becomes the image and the materialistic value, not internally. So a great topic, James. I love it. We'll talk about this more as we go on. But the bottom line, my friends, and this is James Arizona, so a shout out to you, my friend. The body wants the pleasure. It's weak. Don't allow the body to take you over. Your young warriors, that's the big thing. Control the body. Learn how to control. Deep breathing, control that, that manifestation of pleasure. Only give yourself pleasure through your God, through your meditation, through those things, the happiness. Don't allow people to give you, tell you, go get pleasure all the ways. Now, of course, if you're married, of course, if you're under God's blessings and all those type of things, that's a little different thing. And obviously, God wants you to have pleasure with your wife and uh, family and all that kind of stuff. That's great. But you're not going to destroy your family again by having affairs outside your marriage. You're not going to you're not going to break that covenant by having sex with somebody else. You're not going to break that covenant by getting so drunk all the time that you can't take care of responsibilities at home. You're not going to get drunk all the time. You're not going to gamble your whole life savings away so your family doesn't have anything. You're not going to do those things if you have that orientation of being that man that you need to be. 
All right, my friends, once again, thank you, James, for your great comment. I love this topic, and we'll talk about this more in another episode. Have a great day, my friends, and remember two things. One, every day is a new day to a great warrior, and continue to battle on, my friends. Battle on!